Hey, welcome back to Tripod's Garage. Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. No, you're not, you're not gonna see a one-legged guy on a ladder installing slat wall or a 3D printer review or a laser review. But we are gonna be talking about lasers and laser safety. I've been wanting to do a video like this for quite some time because I've seen lots of videos where people just don't recommend them because you know why? They're not following safety protocols. I mean, are these the same people that are going to do this? They're going to tell you not to buy a welder because um, I have a welder. I have a welding helmet. I have welding gloves. I mean, I follow the instructions to make sure that I'm safe and people around me are safe. Are these the same people that are going to tell you don't use a plasma cutter because they're not following the safe, same safety guidelines with, you know, eye protection and welding gloves? I mean, I have a plasma cutter and I use the proper safety precautions when operating those machines. And I also have a plasma CNC. So point is, is that these are very versatile machines, these laser engravers. However, you need to exercise proper precautions while using it and to ensure that way you and others in the area are safe as well. Now there are basically four different classifications of lasers, but the lasers that you're going to be operating, you know, for engraving are technically all class four lasers. It's just a matter if there's safety around them to make it a class one. So let's look at this chart. As I mentioned, there's four classes and for it to be safe, it's a class one safe, even for long term intentional viewing for visible light usually applies when the laser is enclosed inside a device like a CD or DVD player. In a nutshell, anything that's above a class one will require safety goggles to operate that machine. So if you're looking for an enclosed laser, look for it class one. So this is the X-Tool M1. Now the M1 per X-Tool is a class one enclosed laser. However, on the inside, it is a class four laser. Now, say if I wanted to use a rotary, now the bottom's exposed, and this will now be a class four where you have to wear safety goggles to use it. So for another demo here, we have the F1. This is a dual laser source. It has a 1064 nanometer and a 455 nanometer laser. It's enclosed right now, so that means it's a class one device. But if I want to use something that's a little bit bigger underneath, a bigger piece of material, and now I operate it with it open, guess what? It becomes a class four again. So enclosures make a difference for if it's a class one or a class four. All your open lasers, gantry lasers are a class four, regardless. If it's enclosed, that's when it could, with the proper safety around it, it could be a class one. Now let's talk about fire. You know, lasers generate a lot of heat and face it, that's how they cut and engrave. It's essential that you avoid materials that are highly flammable. I mean, you don't want to be uh, engraving something that just flares up right away. And now let's talk about smoke, odors, toxins, you know, because every time that you're cut, you're releasing off gases. You know, these two lasers both have a um, fan that comes out, you know, extracts the fumes and you could actually put it through our window if you so choose, or you could use a fume extraction unit. And I was just maybe just making sure that that gantry open laser is enclosed and you're able to vent it outside. Otherwise you're going to be following the laser with a hose the whole time to make sure that uh, it's extracting, you know, out a window with a, a fan or something. And you definitely want to make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area. Now, it's imperative that you take some precautions before even operating the laser. Make sure that you follow the instructions. Like X-Tool, for instance, they have a whole library of what classification of lasers they have, as well as best practices to use it. And you could self-educate yourself with some videos, of course. Now, it's you'll see that I have um, three pairs of uh, goggles in front of me. Well, these are all certified. One's uh, not an X-Tool, other two are X-Tool brand, and you'll notice on the lenses, it tells you what nanometers that they're good for, for protection, eye protection, and, you know, that they're certified. You know what I do with these? Is I will take extra sets and put them into the foyer, 
that's their entrance to the garage just through the foyer and I'll put them out on the bench right there and that way anyone that's entering the garage could actually put on a pair because they know that I'm laser engraving if the laser goggles are out there. Now you're going to want to make sure that you are following the guidelines in the manual and sometimes there's better documentation online. You're going to want to make sure that you're wearing appropriate protection from eyes to gloves maybe because as you are cutting slash engraving you're, there's going to be soot on that material and maybe you don't want to cross contaminate. Now, if you have an open laser, you may want to think about getting an enclosure because, um, again, it's just to protect you and others. And say that uh, you are engraving and you're, you're like, no, oh, this is a pretty nice surface. I hate to ruin it if that laser goes right through the material. So I would suggest getting what's called a honeycomb bed because that will also protect the surface underneath, your work surface. And it'll also raise the material and give you actually better cutting results. Definitely make sure that your machine is in a well-ventilated area and you want to be venting those off gases outside. If necessary, maybe you're going to want to actually, for the first time, use that laser outside if you have no other options. But you should definitely be extracting those fumes. And here's some don'ts. Never leave the machine unattended while it's operating. I couldn't believe I actually watched someone's review and they gave it a, a bad mark on it because the materials um, were actually on fire and that's because they left the darn machine unattended. I, I just could not believe it. Um, and try avoid looking at the laser. I mean, I know it's pretty cool to watch, but even with safety goggles, just try to avoid staring at it. Don't use materials that are highly flammable. I mean, stay away from highly combustible materials. You kind of will know what they are. It's not worth it. Just stick with natural materials and actually materials that are, um, a lot of manufacturers will have a recommended settings for materials and use those type of materials instead. Avoid extreme settings. If you're going one to three millimeters per second, that could be kind of too slow. So, and that even goes for the opposite don't go faster than what the machine is recommended to go. And I would avoid uh, using uh, materials again that have unpleasant odors or actually release off gases. Um, yeah, don't be trying to engrave like anything like PVC because that releases poisonous fumes. So definitely, again, stay with materials that are basically on the recommended list of um, on the sites. Usually we'll have something and those materials have been tested and Guess what? It will also have some recommended settings, like I said, for engraving slash cutting. Now here are some other things to consider. The lasers could be nice and shiny and you know, they could be um, emitting some nice lights and stuff and that could attract pets and kids. So definitely keep track of where they are at all times. You know, again, I will keep my garage sealed off and so no one will come in without either a knock and wearing safety goggles. Uh, anyone that's pregnant, should definitely not be around where the laser is producing any type of smoke because it's just not healthy for anyone, especially, you know, women that are pregnant. And if you're not educated with a laser, I suggest educating yourself first before your purchase. Make sure you know what you're getting into and that way you can follow this proper safety protocol. As you notice, I'm wearing an X-Tool shirt. Call me a shill. It's fine. But those days are behind me. I don't shill for nobody no more. My daughter made this. She makes all my merch. Shameless plug here. You can find her link down below. But literally, almost my whole garage is full of X Tool. And you know what? Um, they um, have some of the best manuals out there and documentation out of almost any laser engraving company. And I will be putting links down below to a lot of their videos and documentation. And um, you know, one thing that they also offer is stuff like this, a fire suppression set. Okay, so this actually has, this will go in an enclosure, it has sensors, and if a fire is detected, it will release CO2 within that enclosure, putting out that fire within a couple seconds. Pretty darn cool. But again, you should not be leaving your laser unattended. And then of course they offer smoke purifiers and goggles and everything else that you could think of pretty much to operate your lasers nice and safely.
And they also have a great support community on Facebook and everything. So you can also see what's going on there before you even decide on a purchase. It seems that there's a lot of precautions that need to be made when exploring the endless possibilities of laser engraving. However, X2 is getting ready to launch a new laser that literally covers a lot of these safety precautions that I've been mentioning. And it's really, really cool. It's a 40 watt enclosed laser and it's a class one. So that means you shouldn't have to wear any safety goggles. But again, I'm going to still do my, my plug on my video when this laser comes out. I always still wear eye protection. So you only get one set of eyes. However, this machine has some other awesome features. It's double, double top secret. This is the world's first 40 watt enclosed diode laser. It's got a class one safety certification. It's fast, stable speed, 600 millimeters per second. It has dynamic focus engraving and accessories like interchangeable laser modules, riser base, and automatic conveyor feeder. That is pretty cool. So if you're looking to uh, see more of this laser, I'll be featuring it on my channel in, a, in about a week. And, uh, you know, of course, like and subscribe. I really appreciate you tuning in to Tripods Garage. Please have a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you the next time on Tripods Garage. And disclaimer slash safety first. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should stay away. And I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video.